What's happening? Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com Coming to you today to talk about how to have consistent energy every day. <clears throat> this is something I made major progress in the last year and especially in the last six months and I wanted to give you everything that I know. So, without further ado, energy is very important. Especially as you get older, you don't have at 34 the energy that you had at 24 or 18. And this is important not just for getting stuff done, but for mood because it is hard to be happy in a low energy mood. You can be happy in a low energy mood when you're chilling and this and that, but when you actually have stuff to do during the day and you're dragging your feet, it's hard to be happy to go about your day and do things. And if we're talking about depression, depression is 50% low energy. You can't be high energy and be depressed. You can be high energy and be angry if you're feeling something negative, but you can't be depressed unless you are consistently in low energy, all right? So it's very important, both in terms of getting things done and in terms of your own personal quality of life and happiness to be able to have that energy every single day and to have that energy be consistent throughout the day and not have ups and downs and crashes and, and um, things like that. So there's two major things you need to uh, get handled, okay? And I'm gonna cover both of them. Number one is blocking out your day for energy. Um, or for state or whatever you want to call it. And number two is the lifestyle choices you make over a period of time that are going to affect your day-to-day -day life. So first we're going to get into the blocking out your day for consistent energy. I'm going to talk about how I block out my day. So some of this you might have heard before and some of my other stuff, but a lot of this might be new to you because it's stuff that I've only mastered in the last four months. So First off, I uh, hit a caffeine pill in the morning, usually 100 grams, um, and then, uh, or sorry, 100 milligrams, <laughs> not 100, 100 grams, which is like a caffeine pill equivalent to uh, coffee, basically. And I take that now with a greens powder. I take, basically, I just buy whatever the most expensive greens powder is on iHerb, um, and take that uh, concentrated um, energy in there. And it won't necessarily give me an energy boost right then, but I will notice a difference, uh, you know, maybe three, four hours later from uh, the green juice and all those nutrients being absorbed, especially being absorbed on an empty stomach. And I will start to get some energy from that about three or four hours later, whereas the caffeine I fill within 15 minutes. And I take that with a bunch of water. Then I move on to uh, medium to brief high intensity training. So I start with uh, stretching and then weights, and then I hit, uh, or sorry, uh, I do weights three days a week, and then after that I follow that by cardio for 20 minutes on the elliptical to protect my knees and joints as opposed to running, and I do mid to high intensity on that uh, depending on how, how much energy I have that particular day, and then finish up with uh, 15 minutes of yoga, and then I take a nice long hot shower for about 20 minutes, to really loosen up the body and that also makes a big difference um, you know it, it adds to my energy level after I get out and after I finish with a cool shower for about a minute to, to power me back up from the relaxing hot shower and then once I get out of the shower brush my teeth and everything I feel terrific and you know I get up at 7 and I've got nice clean clear energy until noon and I don't eat till noon so I do intermittent fasting Okay, and intermittent fasting is terrific for energy because digestion is the most taxing thing on your body. So my eating window is noon till uh, around 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. So I don't eat anything in the morning and I'm really just cruising on that caffeine and the energy from, you know, some of the food from yesterday as well as water and the uh, vegetable powder that I take down, which is only like 22 calories. So... That's my highest energy level for the day. I became a morning person once I started doing the caffeine, uh, the two liters of water throughout the morning. And um, I've recently just added the vegetable, the greens stuff. And that took me from a morning or a night person to a morning person. And that's my highest level of energy. So from 9, uh, 9 a.m. till uh, noon is my peak productivity time. That's what I'm doing usually the research or the writing down of um, the next article or video. And then I will do, I'll hit lunch, okay? I'll take another caffeine pill at lunch. 
and I will eat, I will drink um, coconut juice straight out of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here in Thailand, so I actually buy the coconut from the supermarket. I drink the juice, uh, which is heavy in electrolytes, so it's really hot here, so it rebalances that and gives me those electrolytes. And then I eat half of the actual coconut, which is about 700 calories and heavy in healthy saturated fat, okay? Saturated fat is not bad for you. You can look at the latest research and look at all the paleo stuff, and the coconut is 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 terrific for you, and it is primarily fat. So a coconut is 150% of your daily fat, and then it has some protein, maybe like I think 15 grams, and some carbs, maybe 50 grams of carbs. So it's not super low carb, but it is low carb. Um, and but the key the key metric there is fat because what you actually want to be running on through the day is fat instead of carbs because fat gives you that um that low uh that that consistent uh, energy without the peaks and dips throughout the day and it is a much better source of fuel than carbs again do your own research on that look it up um but more importantly test it out because I run much better on fat and you look at the vast majority of all the paleo guys and stuff and they run on fat. You talk about uh, Tim Ferriss, his slow carb diet, that runs on fat and and um, slow carbs like you know brown rice and stuff like that. But for me, during the day I don't take in any carbs except if I have uh, an iced uh, mocha, which I do you know usually every other day. Uh, that'll have some carbs in it but I try and limit my uh, daily carbs to under like 70 grams. Okay, so it's not super low carb under 30 grams, but under 70. So really, I will only be getting carbs from my uh, the, from the coconut and from the ice mocha frappe. And that is a big, big thing. Then around the afternoon, I will eat the other half of the coconut around 2.30 or 3 o'clock. And that will cruise me through until five or six, where I will usually have uh, salmon sashimi, uh, raw salmon, which is excellent in an excellent source of protein, as well as an excellent source of omega, th um, omega threes, which is something you really want to watch and make sure that your ratio of omega threes is higher than your ratio of omega sixes. And again, that's not stuff you're going to notice the first day that you do it. But as you consistently do that and you're consistently making sure you have more omega-3s then you will notice a difference and you can also supplement that with krill oil or other types of high EPA high DHA um, omega-3s which is really important that you get that for your energy as well as for your health okay and salmon sashimi is probably the easiest thing you can possibly digest like I will eat that standing up and I I don't even feel it. It's it's the same as if I had a glass of water. That's how little it impacts my digestive system. Whereas the coconut uh, will impact a bit more, but still is quite low. But, and then compare that even further to a McDonald's meal where you need to fucking sit on the couch for three hours afterwards because it's just taking the life out of you. So that should be a good litmus test is, are you able to eat um, what, you're, what you're daily, what you're eating during the day, standing up, and not get tired after. Can you eat it and then be able to go outside and walk right after, or you know, go on to the next part of your day and not have it slow you down? And the stuff that I'm recommending here is is really good for that, especially the salmon sashimi. So again, low to moderate carbs. You are feeding on fat, um, and if you are going to have carbs, you want to make sure you really limit the amount you have at one particular time. Okay. You want to have a Subway sandwich, one of those giant ass sandwiches with bread, you know, at 1130, your, your day is going to be fucked. Uh, I would see guys when I worked back in an office and they would have the big shawarma plate with all the rice and all the everything in there and they'd have it at noon. They'd be excited to go get it. They'd all be talking about it and then they'd be like comatose until three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's what happens when you eat a lot of carbs in one sitting. And if you do it during the day, your energy is going to be fucked for that day, um, especially as you get older. So that's a big no-no. 
okay? You want smaller meals. Uh, I limit my meals to about seven, 800 calories at the most. Some, some like the salmon sashimi is like 400 calories. Um, the coconut is actually the biggest amount of calories that I get, which is 1400 for one raw coconut, which cost me, I mean, I think $1.50. So the amount of value you get per calorie from the coconut is incredible. And you want to have three or four, um, you know, four is optimal, not quite meals, but like 700 calories or at the most. Okay. For me, 510, 170, I don't need more than 2000, perhaps 2100 calories to maintain my weight. Okay. You should know how many calories you need to maintain your weight or how many you need to, to bulk up. Again, you can see all that in the body section of my website, uh, revolutionarylifestyledesign.com. I've got all the links to that stuff, but that's why I can eat, you know, only, you know, 600 calories, one meal, 400, the other, and, and, you know, have four of these relatively small meals where I eat to like 90% full. Okay. If you're just eating to 70% or 60% full, you're going to be hungry all the time. When you eat to 90% full, you're like, okay, I'm that, that satisfied most of my hunger. But what you don't want to do is eat to 100 or like what most people do is like 110% and then you are going to be tired after that meal. Okay. You want to always leave a little bit of room in the tank because that way you're not taxing your digestive system too much. When you really fill yourself up at 110%, your digestive system is now overworked and you know, you're probably gonna have to sit down afterwards. So that's an important thing to uh, keep mentioning. Again, the other important thing is uh, low sugar. Okay, if you keep your carbs low, it's gonna it's gonna be hard to have a high amount of sugar. But especially, especially if you're gonna eat carbs, like low sugar is very important. Um, like try eating a birthday cake in the middle of the day. You'll be in a fucking food coma because sugar fl- fucks with your insulin and your blood glucose, and that does all kinds of negative things for your hormones and your energy and it's really bad if you are going to have sugar have something small at the end of the day like have one of those little bite-sized mars bars or you know one of those little like uh um oreo ice cream sandwiches after you've already done all the work for the day like 8 30 or something like that and and you're you're cool with you know um just sitting on the couch for a couple hours um you know, you can have a bigger meal at the end of the day if you're not able to keep your diet 100%, but have it at the end of the day, and then that's when you have your little treat. Uh, definitely no, no no treats during the day. If I have like a Cinnabon or something at lunch, that day is fucked. Not only is it fucked um, because I'm going to have no energy, but like I've broken my discipline, and then I'm like, well, I had a Cinnabon for lunch. I might as well have more garbage in the afternoon, and I might as well have shit for dinner too. At least that's that's how I work. When I fall off the rails, that that day is fucked. Um, so there's the the point of discipline as well. Okay, you can program a cheat meal into your week, but stick to that. And if you're cheating more, you know, and you're finding it really hard to to struggle, then program another two, program two cheat meals, or even program three, but stick to the discipline that you program for that week, because otherwise, you know then you're in the place of like anything goes, okay? You always want to have, again, like I tell you, I have a health routine in my wonder list. I show you how to do that in my book, how to get organized. And it has my diet, my supplements, and all those things I'm supposed to be following per quarter. And that is um, something that I renegotiate every quarter to make sure that I'm following that and um, to make sure that it's the optimal plan for me, okay? So all this diet stuff that I'm talking about, I have that in my phone, in my wonder list, and I have that, like, this is what I'm supposed to stick to for uh, every day for this quarter. And that's very important. So the next thing you want to do is uh, to avoid FODMAPs that you are allergic to. FODMAPs is basically a massive acronym for long chain carbohydrates that are not digested well by um 30% of the population overtly, and some estimates are as high as like 50 to 60 or 70% of the population. So two big FODMAPs are gluten and dairy. You hear a lot about people, stomachs are not evolved to eat gluten for dairy, and a good amount of people aren't evolved. And 
gluten and dairy cause leaky guts, they cause inflammation, they cause all these other, you know, SIBO and all these other things and many different irritable bowel syndrome in many different people, um, including me, I'm, I'm not cut out for especially dairy, but um, gluten lately is, is not particularly good either because I'm trying to heal my gut. And, uh, you know, I don't want gluten in there, you know, destroying things. So that's very important. Some other ones that you might not know are, are garlic and onions, both of which, um, you know, affect me poorly. And the way you can tell is, is go to the Wikipedia page for FODMAPs and look at all the things and think about like, is your stomach irritated after you eat any of those things? Or like test them individually, you know, test out a big glass of milk, test out a ton of bread. Test out, um, you know, onions, garlic, uh, even strawberries or kale is actually a FODMAP. Um, a lot of people don't know that. So you can have your big kale juice and, you know, feel a bit of an upset stomach after some indigestion like I did. And I realized that kale was a, was a FODMAP. So it's really important to understand which ones um, should be avoided. But if you stick to the, the primarily the paleo diet where you're eating meat, fish, and vegetables, basically the stuff we were evolved to eat over the last billion years, then you're not going to be eating, you know, FODMAPs for the most part because the vast majority of vegetables are not FODMAPs. Meat are not FODMAP, meat's not FODMAP, and, and fish isn't FODMAP. And in my, that's why those are so easily digested. I can digest meat, no problem. Vegetables, very easy. Um, you know, so that's that's very important to understand because if you're allergic to something, it's a FODMAP. Not only does it fuck up, fuck up your gut, which fucks up your digestion, which fucks up your all your systems, but you are actually poisoning your body. You're putting something like if you're having McDonald's, that's toxic. You're putting toxins into your body. Okay, and I love McDonald's more than anybody, but. I know if I'm eating that, I'm actually poisoning my body in the same way you poison your body with alcohol. And that is going to take more energy to detoxify. And you'll feel it when you eat it and you'll feel it the next day. Just like when you uh, drink the night before, the next day you wake up slower and groggier because you've literally poisoned your body and now your body's trying to detoxify those poisons. And it's the same for eating McDonald's or any types of bad food or anything that you're allergic to. You're literally poisoning yourself and robbing yourself of what should be your natural energy. Okay. And you look at all the primitive tribes, people who eat healthy, uh, organic food and, and really subside off of vegetables and meat. And these guys, you know, look at the African tribes and they have six packs into their fucking sixties and they're walking around all day and they are energetic because they are living the way that we're evolved to be, to live, as opposed to sitting at a fucking computer eating um, the standard American diet and getting diabetes and high cholesterol and all those other things because you're living the way that you're not supposed to live. So that's very important, okay? And so those are the, the um, that's how you should block out your day, okay? Then I finished the day uh, with um, salad and chicken breast. Okay. I'll have a salad and chicken breast and I'll cheat a little bit. I'll put some croutons in there and I'll, I'll usually take like a, a Caesar dressing. Um, I prefer vinaigrette cause that's less cheating than like the, the creamy one, but sometimes I'll use the creamy one or I'll use a, if I want to go lighter, I'll use like a Japanese uh, sesame dressing that doesn't have any garlic onions and is, and it's healthier. Um, you can also get this. I used to get this back home. There's some really good vegan Caesar salad dressing that approximate the taste of a good Caesar salad, like 85%. It's like 85% is good, except it has no dairy, no gluten, no onions, and no garlic, okay? The one I eat here has some dairy and some breadcrumbs, the gluten, and probably some garlic and onions, but I don't eat too much of it, so I let myself slide on that. And I let myself slide on the croutons. There's some extra carbs there, but... I mean, you can't have a salad without croutons. It's just wrong. And basically, I just, I get a lot of, um, not the iceberg lettuce, but the green, uh, the dark green and purple leafy greens, uh, organic. Okay, and then I get organic chicken breast. I order it. Uh, there's a service here in Chiang Mai. I order it for the month. It cost me like $20. Gets nothing but honey breast and um, 
uh, teriyaki barbecue, chicken, chicken breast, keep them in the freezer. Start of the day, I move them to the fridge, put like two or three chicken breasts in the fridge, and then I'll have, uh, I'll chop up a chicken breast, put it in a, in a big salad, in a big bowl, and then that'll usually be the dinner, and then it, if I'm still hungry at the end of the day, or if I went really hard in the gym, I'll have another chicken breast, and I'll usually just eat that cold and raw, just right out of, uh, right out of the Tupperware, because, you know, it's the, it's the end of the day, and, and really it's just to fill me up, okay? And protein is very good for that. Protein is four times more sati satiating, which means fills you up, than any other type of food group. So you definitely want to have some of that clean protein on hand. And uh, chicken breast is just about the best thing you can do. You know, every bodybuilder is on the chicken breast, and uh, it's terrific stuff. Now, you can add rice into the mix, uh, but I've, white rice you got to be careful with because there's a lot of carbs. And... If it's high glycemic, okay, which means it fucks with your blood sugar. White rice is actually like higher glycemic than fucking ice cream, okay? So it really knocks your blood sugar up. If you're going to have white rice, you want to have maybe a third or like a fourth of what the standard serving is. I've actually moved away from rice, even though I live in Asia now, and just rely on the coconut purely. Uh, rice also has lectins, which many people, which some people are allergic to. Okay, you're better off with the brown rice, but... I would rather you have the, the coconuts um, for the electrolytes as well as the healthy fats and much lower carbs and much, much, much lower uh, on the glycemic index. So that is the day broken down. And then now we're going to get into point two. If you remember, it's the lifestyle choices, okay? So the first one is stand as much as you can, okay? You can see I do all these videos standing and I would prefer my day to be doing nothing but you know, high energy videos like this standing up. However, unfortunately I have to do, you know, some technical work here and then. And if it's really grinding me, I will sit down or if I'm going to the coffee shop, I'll sit down for an hour or so, but I try and spend the majority of the day standing up. And that is, um, part of one of my health routines. Okay. Because if you look at all the evidence, they say that, that sitting is the new smoking. You're not meant to sit for extended periods of time. And if you are, you're meant to sit in the sort of squat position that you'll see um, some people over here in this part of the world do. And because it, you know, it stops the blood flow, it stops the energy, it stops, um, you know, you don't breathe as deeply. Sitting for long periods of time is, is not good for you. And it's terrible for your energy. So I try and stand up as much as possible. If you are still working a job, um, you can get a standing desk set up. That's what I did when I was, I had, I built like a variable on top of my table when I was still in sales. So I could stand up and, um, you know, basically I will stand up for the vast majority of the time unless I'm in a coffee shop or unless I really have some boring technical shit to do and sometimes sitting down it's easier for like task and, and technical oriented stuff. Okay. So, but again, I try not to sit down and start relaxing until after 6 PM, which means that after all my work is done for the day. Next one is you want to ejaculate as little as possible. My record for no ejaculation is eight months. And it, that was the highest energy, most productive. That was about two and a half years ago. Highest energy, most productive period of my life. Um, I felt like some days I felt like a caged animal, but I would transmute that energy into my work and I was working job business like a machine. Okay. Ejaculation is a fucking real, real, real thing. And it's one of, if not ejaculating is, is probably the most effective antidepressant in my experience that I could recommend. And perhaps the most important energy booster that I know of is, is not ejaculating altogether or ejaculating as little as possible and um, avoid the porn if you can. Next point is have a mission to motivate you. Okay, you know, I, I'm always talking about the mission. When you have a mission to motivate you, you have a reason to get up, go through the pain, get things done, and you're seeing good things happen in the future and that mission keeps you going. Okay. And then at the end of the day, you also want to have something to look forward to because if you don't have something to look forward to at night, the day can get a bit 
dreary and you can get it be be beaten down and that's going to make you just want to go laid on the bed or, you know, sit there and put your head down because that day is just in your mind is shit and the day is shit and then there's nothing to look forward to at night. So if I'm having a hard day, I'm working really hard, I, I can push myself with a bit of higher energy for, you know, another, I'm like, just give it another two more hours because at the end of the day, okay, I'm going to see this girl or I'm going to see my friends or I'm going to see, uh, do something that's, that's going to be really fun. Okay. Uh, you want a low stress lifestyle. Okay. Low stress, happy lifestyle, sunshine, because the further you are away from that, uh, the more tired you're going to feel because you're going to want to escape from your life. You're going to want to, you're going to look at your day and you're going to be like, man, I don't want to do this. And you're just going to be like, I'm, I'm tired. Whenever I don't want to do something over a consistent period of time, I notice my energies go down because my bro my body, my brain is literally like, I don't want to be doing what you have me doing. Like, I just want to go to sleep and make this all go away. So low stress is lifestyle. Very key. Um, live somewhere warm, sunshine, all that good stuff. Fix sleep apnea if you suffer from it. Uh, you can see over there, but you can't see it, is my sleep apnea machine, which I try and wear every night. Uh, makes a big difference. Instead of waking up 100 times during the night, gasping for breath and not having oxygen, you keep the window open at night to make sure you're getting enough natural air and you put the fucking giant uh, Darth Vader snorkel mask on that scares every girl that comes over. And... Uh, it's a pain in the dick to clean and it's a pain in the ass to get used to at night, but it means that I'm actually fucking breathing at night instead of gasping for breath every five minutes like I would normally be and scaring to death whoever I'm sleeping next to. It's, you know, major, major thing is making sure you get enough oxygen, get enough air. Um, in the future, I'm actually going to look at oxygen concentrators, something Victor Pride was talking about. He got a special oxygen mask and stuff like that. And I think that will probably even give me more energy. So if you are there, I would suggest looking into that. So sleep apnea, get that fixed. And then uh, during the day, as for oxygen, you want to learn how to deep breathe. Okay. And by that, I mean in through the nose, out through the mouth. You stand up real straight, pull your chest up, let your diaphragm out, get it in deep. And then really push it out hard. And you do like 10 of those. If you're struggling on the last uh, couple minutes of cardio, I'll start breathing like that. You know, it's called like the lion's breath. And it really gives you that extra sense of energy. Or, or if you're fading around 3.30 or 4 o'clock and you've got another hour and a half of work to do, stand up, do a couple of those deep breaths, go in the washroom if you have to, if you're in public or at work. And then, you know, use your hands to push it out, like Tai Chi style. Do 10 or 20 of those. That'll ramp you up and give you the, the energy to get through the day. All right, very important. And finally, use music as a state booster. I've got my headphones in, um, you know, a large part of the day, at least four to five hours a day, especially when I wake up right in the morning. Headphones are going in at the gym, headphones are in. And if I'm doing work that's not particularly technical, I will have the headphones in, you know, maybe while I'm writing down the notes for a video. I'll be standing up, moving around, dancing a bit to the music and, and putting my notes in there. And music is an excellent state booster and an excellent, excellent energy giver. I highly recommend Spotify. You can get all the songs in the world, you know, download them to your phone, stream them offline. It's beautiful. And that's it. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you put these into practice, I promise you major, major, uh, Increase in your energy. Now, some of them you might not notice right away, okay? Like um, eating vegetables every day. That, that might take three or four days for you to really notice the difference as opposed to, you know, if you're just eating McDonald's, but you will start to wake up less tired. You won't be stiff. You'll have more energy naturally in the morning. Um, the same thing with the, the coconuts and the omega-3s. That stuff you might not notice right away. But the intermittent fasting, the caffeine, um, you know, the not ejaculation, standing up, you'll notice quite quickly. And uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Hopefully this was useful to you. Thank you for watching the video, listening to the audio, reading the article, checking out my website or checking me out on Facebook, Twitter, 
iTunes, SoundCloud, all kinds of content for you. And as always, I wish you all the best in your personal development journey.